Yesterday I mentioned getting, finally getting, the tentacle gloves I had wanted for three years. What I forgot to do was include the Etsy link in the description if anyone is at all interested in getting a pair for themselves. Link below. Now the subject on today's video is going to come from the University of Sheffield, where they have been forced to apologise after a bouncer stood outside the quote, gender neutral toilet, asking people what sex they were. Now I think it's important we talk about this subject, because it's one that has floated around for about two years anyway. More recently in places like Vermont, there was a bill passed meaning that all businesses had to have a gender neutral bathroom. Congratulations Vermont. Now as far as gender neutral bathrooms go, I tend to take the position, if they're all cubicles, I don't really care. However, there are still types of facilities that men use exclusively. And this is where the argument of gender and biological sex comes into play. To be clear though, I don't particularly care about bathrooms in the grand scheme of things. If you're going to get rid of urinals, go for it. However, how people feel, comfort-wise, should be respected. So I'm okay with there being a men's, women's, disabled, and if you want to have gender neutral as well, go for it for those that are totally comfortable taking a dump next to somebody else of the opposite sex. I, I don't think people care so much. And as we all know, girls don't poop. They cry out of their eyes, remember? Yeah. <laughs> as far as the gender argument goes anyway, it doesn't matter. We do know, though, that people do get uncomfortable, as I've earlier stated. But it is nice to see, with gender-neutral bathrooms being introduced, people using them because they just don't care, or using them because either the respective gender's bathroom is full, or they can't get into the disabled one to use all those fancy levers and bars. Not gonna lie, in a pinch, I will use the disabled one in Sainsbury's because it's just so much cleaner than the men's, which is also half the size of the women's and doesn't have a urinal. I'm pretty sure guys are just peeing on the wall at that point. Now while doing research for this video about gender neutral bathrooms, I did come across a video where it talks about the expectation where people are casually just able to go to the bathroom and chat as they are, and then the perceived reality of the awkwardness. And I think there is a point to both. If you're with friends, yeah, you may be able to just talk, but in reality, most people are very awkward. Guys, for the most part, certainly if using a urinal like space, personal space, they don't care for the chit chat, they go in, use it, and leave. So the expectation video was, well, wrong for the most part. And it's also important to note that many of the arguments against gender neutral bathrooms stem around the argument of being open to allowing perverts to simply spy on other people legitimately. Which, of course, if true, which I think many would argue it is, I know Steven Crowder tried to prove some. I'm transgender. What? No, you can't be in here. This is a girl's bathroom. I identify as a girl. You are not. Do you hear yourself right now? You are not a woman. You have such. A I am a girl. Voice. Transgender. We could. We could stay with our regular voice. What? Was it Steven Crowder? It showed a certain awkwardness and disdain, distrust. It proves a point, even though it is, if anything, reductio ad absurdum. Now to get back on track with this article, I think we should carry on with this for a little bit. The male student, named only as Dom, said he was banned from going into the gender-neutral toilet after telling the bouncer he was a man. Well, there was his first mistake. He should have identified as a quasar. He tweeted, Big fan of the equality that our uni offers, but to ban people from going to a gender-neutral toilet because they identify as male is pathetic. You didn't identify as a male. You identified as a man. That was your mistake. If you said demi-queer male, you may have gotten away with it. For you to be putting a guy on the door saying, what gender are you, before letting them use the toilet is labeling people, the third year student added. It's also discrimination. It is a gender neutral toilet, but you are barring a gender from access. I would assume on the grounds of perceived privilege, but by denying them access to that bathroom, you reinforce the widely perceived notion that male privilege isn't all that, or doesn't actually exist in favour of privilege being granted to others while denying it to men. Which is not equality, 
it is tearing men down. That is well established at this point. Speaking to the Times, a spokesman for the university said, all oh, spokesman, said a new member of staff misunderstood their policy. He added, Our gender-neutral toilets are available for everyone to use. We apologize for any upset this mistake may have caused. I, I demand compensation um, in the form of urinal cakes and sandwiches. A student union spokesman said, Many trans and or non-binary people face a lot of anxiety about using toilets, and it can often be a very stressful experience. So naturally, the only way to make them feel comfortable is to exclude a gender in a gender-neutral bathroom. That makes absolutely no sense. Everyone experiences pee anxiety, or poop anxiety, or crying anxiety when it comes to using the bathroom. I know many people who don't use urinals that are right next to another guy. They want there to be a gap between them. It is well established that many girls go with a group of friends, because that makes them feel more comfortable when they decide to take a massive cry. <laughs> In its drive to appeal to all communities, it's coming up with accommodation exclusively for lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender students, possibly. Which is interesting, really, because it raises a question of, will this create the inevitable community within community and segregation because of gender and sexuality? I assume religion will one day feature too. Can we perhaps have a Sharia court in the Muslim one, but make it okay for the Muslim one to encroach on all other ones, and if they don't do as the Muslim ones say, they can throw them off a rooftop or cut off limbs? And with the gay dorms, are we going to have obligatory glory holes and a gay bar? I have nothing witty or cliche to say about bisexual ones, because let's face it, every student you know is bisexual. I think everyone I knew at university back ten years ago was bisexual. And to me back then it was nothing more than a fad, since all of them have settled down with somebody of the opposite sex. To clear things up though, I was not. I don't find dudes attractive. Now while this university is going down the path of being inclusive to all and accommodating to all and creating exclusive things for everyone, which I think is a drain on resource but if anything just shows how willing universities are to pander, it does raise the question of how far should they go anyway. And is it as important as they make it seem? I personally don't see the point in creating exclusive dorms, or halls, or homes for people of exclusive genders, or sexualities. I get that you'd want them to feel more comfortable around other people who are like them, but you often find the best way people fit in with other people is when they don't care about gender, when they don't care about sex, when they don't care about race, religion, when you just treat people equally without these identifying factors, you often find people just get along because they are utterly irrelevant. Who people find attractive, what people believe in, and what gender you are should not play any part in any kind of progressive society where you want to get along and not have to separate yourselves into small communities to not even fit in, because that's what will happen. By separating yourselves, you don't fit in with everyone else. That isn't very inclusive. In fact, that if anything creates more division, which is a key issue I take when certainly a university raises these kind of ideas, which sound good because it encourages more students to go there knowing that they will be accepted within a community, but bad because they no longer fit in with the rest of the campus because they have been separated by something as arbitrary as gender race, sex, sexuality, religion, and so on. Oh, and let's not forget the poor, defenseless quasars. Anyway, today, on the Cthulhu Kin and Friends show, I should be doing a full response to Prime Minister's questions. I will link it in the description below. I will also be linking it on my channel page nearer the time. If you are at all interested, please consider joining me there at 9.30pm GMT. So I hope everyone has a lovely Wednesday. And thank you all for listening. I've got downs. In your ass. Imagine my shock.